Welcome back, we are Mr. and Mrs. Smith. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Also leave any comments or questions that you may have below. So just a quick recap about what our journey is, if you're just tuning in for the first time. We have decided to let you guys in on us starting a plant-based, whole food plant-based diet. And what that consists of is re not eating any processed sugars, processed meats. What we forgot to mention before is that that also includes all dairy products, ice cream, which I love, cheese, which I love, uh, cow's milk. But, so with all that being said of everything that you cannot eat, what can you eat? So we have uploaded some videos of some of the meals that we prepared. I think there might be three different things on there. Um, I did not show just a basic meal. The things I showed you have to mix, you have to measure, you have to blend. Everything that you cook, you don't have to. We make some meals that are just steaming broccoli, carrots, cauliflower, corn. You can make it as simple as you want. Good morning. I'm going to show you a really quick thing that I like to do for breakfast. It's a chocolate peanut butter shake or smoothie. And all it contains is almond milk, bananas, dates for sweetening, cocoa powder, peanut butter, and then I also add ice to thicken it up. There's many variations. You can add oats. You can also add cinnamon. I have done that. It's awesome any way you do it. Some people like to freeze the fruit before the night before. Instead of using ice, I just tend to forget to freeze the fruit. So I just add the ice in the morning. So here's the video. I will also post the ingredient list so that if you want to try it, you can. But it is an easy one to look up on Pinterest or Google. So here you go. And there you have it. So my smoothie is done. Let's see if I can get this top off with my one hand. And of course, if you want it thicker, you can put more ice in it. For me, I kind of like this consistency that I have here. And I have a really nice chocolate smoothie that I'm gonna enjoy. Now I'm gonna make a pasta dish that you can use for lunch or dinner. It's really good. You use tomato, some of the ingredients you use are tomatoes, roast red peppers, which I'm getting ready to take. I think you can see them behind me in the convection oven. Getting ready to take them out. And I'm also using whole wheat pasta because that is allowed on the plant-based diet. You also can use garlic, which I've kind of transitioned over to using fresh garlic that I just chop up instead of the pre-minced garlic because the fresh garlic has a lot potent, lot more potent flavor. The recipe also calls for some other items. I will list the recipe. I did get it off of Pinterest. It is really good. The only thing that we are changing is that I'm going to be using a little bit of wine to give it a little bit of a kick. I've made it a couple of times and each time we both said it needed wine in it. And I'm also 
using a combination of cashews and almonds. The recipe calls for almonds. I didn't have enough, so I'm mixing up some cashews with it too. Okay, so what you did not see me add was a little bit of lemon juice, some parsley, and paprika. And the recipe actually called for olive oil. But what I've been finding is that in a lot of recipes, for to transition it over to plant-based without the oil, you can substitute it and use soy sauce. So I did the soy sauce instead. Now I'm gonna get the wine and put the wine in. I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna pour in what I think I want. Okay, so now Marlon, he just picked up our daughter from dance. So he just walked back in, so I've been filming by myself. But he's gonna put the spaghetti in the pot. We're going to get that boiling now. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn the Vitamix on and mix it up. So we did not add any salt. We did not add any oil in, to the water. Um, you know, you just have to watch it just like you do when you have all that stuff in it anyway. So this is my daughter, Alanis. She wants Hello. to say hi to everyone. Hi. The other one's in there watching SpongeBob. So. We're gonna turn the Vitamix on and get this mixing. So my sauce is done and I'm waiting on the noodles to finish cooking. I'm getting ready to saute the kale. The kale has to be sauteed in water, again, not oil, and it does well, it won't stick to the pan, it'll be fine, so I'm gonna show you guys that as well. Okay, so I like to just use water that's in my teapot, if I have any in there, and then I will let it kinda heat up for a minute or two. I have a gas stove, so it doesn't take long. If you can see, it's already heated. And I'm just gonna pour my kale in there. So you can see that, hopefully you can see that some of the um, kale is actually beginning to get a little tender. Okay, so I have drained my pasta and right now I am heating up the sauce only because I put the wine in it. Our 11 year old, she does eat along with us and we have a four year old also but because we're trying to transition her, we introduce her to the foods, but we have not completely transitioned her. If you have small children, you know they can be iffy about what they eat. Um, so I'm just putting things on her plate and letting her try it. So I wanna definitely cook out this alcohol, but at least it gives us a little pop of flavor. This next recipe is just one of the simple ones that I would do if I'm not wanting to really get into measuring anything. The first thing I'm gonna start with is preparing the butternut squash so that it can cook while I am cutting up my other vegetables. So this is my butternut squash. It's not a very large one, but it'll be large enough for my family. As you can see, my four-year-old got a hold of it and decided to color on it, but that won't bother us cooking it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually cut off the stem, slice it in half, and then take the seeds out. So this is what the butternut squash looks like when you cut it open. So I am going to get the seeds out. Then I'm going to actually put some soy sauce on my lined baking sheet because we're trying to keep with not using as much oil as possible to stick with the dietary rules. And the soy sauce is one that they will let you use. I don't know if it's gonna turn out nasty or not, but we'll find out. So you preheat your oven to 400, you place your squash face down, and then you throw it in the oven, I believe about 30 to 45 minutes. Of course, you wanna check it when the flesh is tender to touch, soft, and you know it should be done. Now, the next thing I'm gonna start preparing is my fresh green beans. As you can see, I have the water in the pot. I'm gonna put in 
garlic and onions and this is an original recipe but I have to admit my husband was the first one who kind of did this recipe so we've been using it since he kind of came up with it and we're also going to put cut up mushrooms in it so I'm going to let the garlic and onion saute for a few minutes I am now going to add in the green beans. Now you can see that they've been cooking a little bit. I'm gonna let those saute to the green beans are pretty tender and then I'll add my mushrooms and seasonings. So you can see the green beans are cooking and I did add a little bit, a little bit more water. So as the water cooks down, just add more to it instead of adding oil. I am also going to make some quinoa, which is a type of grain. And this is the bag and kind of what it looks like. So let me add the quinoa. I already have the water boiling. I think I may do a little bit of cilantro lime, just like a cilantro lime rice with the quinoa. The quinoa is a grain. You can make many different recipes and use it in many different things. You can just kind of go on line and look up some recipes, what you can make with it. All right, so now my green beans have cooked enough to where they're a little crisp, but they are getting more tender. I'm gonna add in my mushrooms now, and I'm just gonna continue to saute those. In the meantime, once the mushrooms cook down, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of extra seasonings. You can season your green beans however you like. And then I'm also gonna pour just a small amount of balsamic vinaigrette. Um, I know I said we're trying to stick with the no oils. The balsamic vinaigrette that I'm using actually has soybean oil. So I think, think that should be okay. Okay, so I think that my squash is done. So I'm gonna reach in here and take them out. As you can see, they have browned. So now I just gotta find somewhere to put them. Okay, so this is, the, this is the quinoa that is already completed. It's pretty fluffy, as you can see. It's not really like rice if you haven't eaten it. It's kind of like a little bitty, I don't know how to explain it. They're kind of little circular grains. So I do not have cilantro, I mean, I do not have any lime, so I'm gonna have to switch this up and do something else with it. But whatever it is, it should turn out pretty good. So these are my squash, the butternut squash that I have already roasted in the oven. I cut them up and I am actually going to prepare them a lot like you would do sweet potatoes. So I'm just adding cinnamon on top of them. Then I'm gonna take some maple syrup because you can have maple syrup while you're eating on a whole food plant-based diet. Of course, everything in moderation. And I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit over top. I'm gonna throw these back in the oven for about five minutes. And then we will show you the finished product. And so this is the plate of green beans with mushrooms and balsamic vinaigrette. Quinoa with a little bit of soy sauce in it and butternut squash with maple and cinnamon. So this meal was a pretty easy one. While it took about an hour to cook, mainly for the prep time, with roasting the potatoes, cutting off the edges of the green beans, and cutting up the vegetables, that's what took most of the time up. But other than that, this is one of the meals you can make that is really simple and easy. So thanks for watching.